All right, in number 15, we've got another wheel. Um, and in the last one, we talked about conditions when the wheel might slip. And we said in the last one, if you yanked it too hard uh, or didn't have enough static friction, then the wheel would, would slip. In this one here, we do have slippage, okay? So a good mental image here is the rear, maybe the rear tires on a car, uh, as long as it's a rear wheel drive. And uh, the tire is, uh, is rotating. There's some torque that's being applied to the wheel. So the wheel is acceler accelerating angularly and the vehicle itself is also accelerating, but um, uh, <laughs> anyway, so let's take a look at this. It's a 20 kilogram wheel. It's got a radius of gyration um, of such and such. Um, so there's a moment acting on the wheel and find the angular acceleration and the acceleration of the center. All right. Coefficient of kinetic friction is such and such. All righty. So let's think about uh, what's going on with our forces when we do this. Draw some forces on here. So, oops. Of course, we've got our normal force here. And we've got our weight down this way as well. And also we've got some friction, okay? Now, the wheel is going to be spinning, okay? So picture at the bottom of that wheel, all right, the bottom of the wheel is trying to go to the left, as it slides. So it's sliding to the left. The friction wants to oppose that. And so the friction is actually going to act this way here. So we got some kinetic friction uh, working for us there. All right. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get to the uh, angular acceleration on this thing and see what we get. Okay. Uh, let's put our pivot in the center. Do I want to do that? Yeah, we do, we do, we do. Because we, we actually know the kinetic friction. Um, we know exactly what that's going to be. And so we've got the moment that's given to us, which is minus 100. And then our friction is positive kinetic friction, and it's out there a distance of 0.4, and that has to equal I around the center of mass times alpha, okay? So we probably ought to get that center of mass, or sorry, that moment of inertia real quick. So IG is mk squared. It's a 20 on to 0.3. And when you work that out, what you get is 1.8 for that. Okay. All right. So I got it minus 100. My kinetic friction is going to be mu k times the mass times g. And that's ig times alpha. Okay. We know the mass. We know gravity. We know the coefficient is 0.5. Plug in all your numbers. Okay. Um, well, I can show you what that looks like here. Let's get one more line on here. I don't want to get too messy. So minus 100 plus 0.5 times 20 times 9.81. And that's 1.8 onto alpha. And then alpha turns out to be 33. 0.76. Okay, pretty easy to take care of there. All right, now we've got our alpha. Uh, we just need to get the trans the translational acceleration. Uh, now in this case, we can't use the same trick that we did last time. Now what we did last time is we were able to relate 
that translational to the angular by the alpha r relationship. Now that's not going to work this time around because it's slipping. All right. Since it's slipping like that, we are not guaranteed any particular relationship between a and alpha. Okay. So um, we've got to move to um, to get the translational acceleration. We got to move to our, our next option of of equations, uh, which is to come up here and, and look at the forces. So ho horizontally, the only force that we have is the kinetic friction. So Fk is ma. So we got mu mg is ma. Those guys cancel. All right, we've seen this a lot now. So a just becomes 0.5 onto 9.81. So A is 4.905. Okay. So let's talk about what you see when the road conditions are slippery, if there's a little bit of ice or if there's some snow, okay? It seems like every time there's a little bit of snow, um, you know, people are sliding a little bit. I always see somebody who's stopped and they're trying to get going and they rev their engine, they're gun it, put the pedal to the floor and the wheel starts to spin and it spins faster and faster and faster. And what happens to the car? The car doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't make any difference, okay? No difference at all. And that's because the only thing that's going to accelerate you is this kinetic friction. And that kinetic friction, it doesn't give a hoot whether the wheel is turning quickly or whether the wheel is turning slowly. All that matters is that you have slippage. Okay, that, that, that's it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about dragsters. Now, dragsters like to do that. Okay, they gun it. The thing starts to move, uh, the wheel starts to turn, smoke goes everybody everywhere, right? Okay, and then, um, and then the car begins to move, and at some point though, the wheels go from slipping to not slipping. Okay, from slipping to not slipping, and when that happens, that means it, it happens because there is some. maximum rotation. Once those wheels reach that maximum rotation, then you're going to have a point at which the transverse velocity of the wheel, in other words, the, the rim speed on the wheel, the wheel out, out there on the edge of the wheel, is equal to the forward velocity of the car. Okay. <laughs> When that happens, then the wheel won't slip anymore. And then your coefficient goes from kinetic to static, which is greater. All right. And so at that point, then you actually get more acceleration than you did when the wheel was slipping. Okay. But that only happens because there's a maximum RPMs for your engine. There's a maximum rotation rate for that tire. All right. If it if the tire rotation didn't max out, then you would never go from the slip to the no slip condition. Okay. All right.